Welcome to the Game Changer Podcast. I'm your host, Elijah Bryant, and we got a special guest with us today. We got one of the goats, Brent. How <laughs> What's you up, doing? Man? Good. Good. Appreciate you for coming. Appreciate you for coming. So let's bring him back. Where you're from, and let's talk about your upbringing. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm actually not too... I grew up probably about an hour from here, a little east of here, a little town called Okeechobee, Florida. Okay. Um, you've probably done some land deals out there. <laughs> not yet, but so, all I'm right, check it out. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming soon. But uh, yeah, I grew up out there. Uh, our biggest producer of income is feeder calves, so cattle. And uh, ultimately, I think that that's why I was uh, attracted to the land business was because everyone was chasing after the dirty old stinky nasty cat pee houses yeah and i got roped in that for a little while mm-hmm. i was doing that for a little while and uh, i was searching for something different i wanted to let's 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 bring yeah. them back okay. let's All bring right. them back so do you have any siblings yeah i got a sister um she's three years younger than me she still lives in okeechobee florida uh, and we've recently moved back to florida uh closer to home we're living in uh on the east coast of florida now but uh yeah okay miss florida all right. So, any jobs growing up? Any like entrepreneur? Yeah, I was side entre- hustles. Always, always. Before we knew what like we called it, uh, just business. Like, I think the the new amazing millennial, or I shouldn't say millennial word, is side hustle. That's like the new mm-hmm. word for entrepreneur. <laughs> um, but I was always hustling. You know, we used to sell uh, creepy crawlers. We used to have this machine called creep. We, you make little bugs. Yeah. We would sell them on the side of the road. We sold candy. I started a lawn business when I was in like fifth grade. Mm. Uh, borrowing neighbor's lawnmower, mowing other neighbors, and then I think uh, I was grossing a little over $100,000 a year wow. the year I graduated high school with my lawn business. But I always wanted to get in real estate. Yeah. Like I wanted to do something one day. Mm-hmm. Did you go to college? So I tried multiple times. <laughs> um, I was going, I got my real estate license in 2007. It took me like three times to take the test. Uh, I took horticulture classes because I wanted to be a landscape architect. Mm-hmm. Um, and finally, I was like, you know, I got my real estate license finally. And then 2007, I got in real estate. Okay. So, but, yeah. What got you into real estate? Yeah. And who, like, mentored you? So, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be wealthy. Like, I wanted to create jobs. Um, so, I left the lawn business, moved to uh, West Palm Beach. So I bought, this was actually, let me back up a little bit. I bought that first rental property. So I got into real estate to buy for myself. So So the agent that was training me, Velva Cannon, she was my my sponsor in Exit Realty. She got a listing that next day and I bought the house from her. Uh, Mm. So I rented that house out. We moved to the coast and 2008 was happening, 2009. And I pretty much quit. I was like, I can't (laughs) do this anymore. I called my landlord and I said, I can't pay the rent anymore. Um, they put a big judgment, ruined my credit, and uh, luckily my wife at the time, uh, her grandpa was like, just, I loved him. He introduced me to Jim Rohn. Mm. Not personally, but through cassette tapes. Um, and guys, or anybody's like wondering what a cassette tape is, it's like, no. Uh, I, I actually <laughs> had to transfer them the CDs because I didn't have a cassette player. But um, I was listening to Jim Rohn, and he said, join the military, go back to school. So I joined the Army. Finally went to college after a couple of deployments to Afghanistan. And so I finally got that college degree many, yeah. many years later. Wow, wow. So what got you into the land business? Yeah, and I was starting to kind of tell you a little bit about that. So I, I started acquiring rentals. And up until about uh, 2016, I had about nine doors or so. But here was the thing about my rentals. Like, they were garbage. Like, like. I shouldn't say garbage, but they were fixer uppers and I put myself in so much debt. And I also had to pay for college courses. So the army was paying me to go to college, but I went to a private college in Melbourne, Florida. So I had to go out there and hustle. And I learned how to wholesale houses by door knocking people that were on notice of default or Liz pendants and foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So I paid for classes and then I kind of set that aside. And then we moved to Colorado Springs. I'm a brand new second lieutenant. And I picked up my house wholesaling business again. I was learning through Tom Kroll and Wholesaling Inc. And I was spending a fortune on postcards. Mm. So I would send all these postcards. How much did you say you spent like on average? You know, I racked up about three credit cards. My wife, I hope she doesn't watch this, (laughs) but uh, I I was almost in like $15,000 in debt from Mm. credit cards, from postcards. Not that the Wholesaling Inc., not that the wholesaling didn't work. It's I wasn't able to work it because... 
I only had like 30 minutes for a lunch break. So I would zoom off mm. post, go meet a seller for five minutes and then run, run back. back. If I didn't get the contract, I wasn't getting the contract. Yeah. Um, so I was searching for answers. I was like, there's gotta be a better way. And I wanted to get out of the military because I was preparing for my third combat deployment. Mm. This time there's a baby involved. I'd already had one divorce because I was gone from, like, from home for like years at a time. Um, so I was like, I gotta figure out a way to get out of this. And I started searching for answers, listening to stuff like, like you know, your podcast and your YouTube channel and uh, just searching for answers. And I heard a guy talking about land flipping and mm. I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. And what about like land flipping that like resonated with you? Yeah, you, I was starting to talk about this a few minutes ago, but I'm glad you reined me back in. But um, I wanted to go against the herd mentality. Mm. Like I've always been a little different. Like you probably, <laughs> I, like I want to do something a little different. Like I don't want to be like everyone else. And I know about herds, I know about cattle because I'm from Okeechobee, Florida. And what happens to the herd? They get slaughtered, they get killed. So mm. I wanted to be different than everyone else. Um, and no one was talking about land investing back in 2016, no one. And I heard this guy talking about land investing. I was already mailing the tax delinquent list for houses. You know what I was doing with the land leads? You know what I was doing with the land records? Nothing. Nothing. So that night, I took Tom Kroll's postcard from Wholesaling Inc., the Tribe postcard. It's a handwritten postcard. We still call it the Tribe postcard. And I sent it out to 687 people that were behind on their taxes in land in Colorado Springs. And my phone almost melted. Mm. You know what's crazy? It's kind of like very similar. Like I had, when I got my first deal, I had all my land leads just pushed to the side. I used to just pass up on them. I used to just stick to houses, stick to houses. But until I'm like, you know, I networked with people that was doing land, that's when they started picking up for me. So now, right, so did you close any deals from that yeah. calling? Cause I know they're killing your phone yeah. now. So I thought I was mailing the tax delinquent list, but I was actually mailing the county held tax lien list. Basically this land was so inefficient and, and it wasn't that good. It wasn't buildable, it wasn't accessible, it was landlocked. A lot of garbage that yeah. people wouldn't even pay the back taxes on. So, and the county thought I was just trying to pay the back taxes. I was like, no, I, don't have it. I don't have money to pay the back taxes. I was in debt. Just cause, right? <laughs> and uh, so the first guy called, he wants to sell me the land for $285. And I'm like, what, $285? And, but at that time in 2016, like I was kind of broke because like I had all these doors and God forbid anybody move out. like. I'm like all my discretionary income, my extra money from the military yeah. went to houses, my rentals. So mm -hmm. that kind of sucked. I was like, how do people get rich in real estate? This, this is a scam. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked that seller, I said, can you give me a week to learn, like figure out what this is all about? Cause I was, I was honest. I was like, look, I'm in the military. I have no clue what I'm doing. And uh, he let me go look at it. I went and looked at it and I didn't know what it was worth. I had no clue what land was worth. And I saw a real estate office down the street. Mm -hmm. So I called the real estate office and luckily on a Saturday that real estate agent was in there, nice lady, and I was like, hey, what's the blowout price? Like I need to know the get or done now price for these two lots on Lake Avenue, it's in Palmer Lake, Colorado. She goes, I'm, I'm familiar with where it's at. I was like, okay. She goes, maybe 10,000. I was like, my eyes almost <laughs> popped out of my head. I was like, $285 for 10,000? 10, like $10,000 right now? I don't even make that, like it takes me like two months of work to make $10,000 in the military and I'm working like 12 hours a day, I'm burnt out. Um, so I was like, I will call you as soon as I buy it. Thanked for her, I thanked her for her time, cause I wanted her to list it. Yeah. I need to get her done now price. I need to get sell this thing quick. I want the blowout price. I don't want your list it for two years for me. I want to I'm sell it. I want 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or today, you or know, today. preferably. So <laughs> she calls me back five minutes later and makes an offer for five grand. Mm. I was like, I know she's lowballing me. Okay, accepted. Right. You <laughs> I was just like, want to get that first deal done. <laughs> I was like, when can you close? She said, next week, Wednesday. And this is Saturday. Mm -hmm. She said, Wednesday. I called the seller. I said, can I pay you on Tuesday? So I sure enough picked up a quit claim deed on Tuesday. Didn't do any title search, nothing. Like, I, I'm, I was like, I was like <laughs> struck by all, like, holy cow, I can't believe I'm going to make money this fast. And luckily everything worked out. Went and picked up my $5,000 certified check on Wednesday and literally did another deal that weekend wow. <laughs> on a land deal. So that's, just that's, rolling and rolling. That's amazing, that first deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you get that first deal and then you say you get another one, mm -hmm. you said that next week. Yeah. How did that deal come about? You know, same thing, same list. The seller's like, come to my house, pay me 500 bucks. She had already had the deed notarized. I was like, holy cow, this woman knows what she's doing. 
Her husband bought it many years ago. He was like a, a stockbroker. She didn't care about it. This land was landlocked in Colorado Springs, surrounded by state park land. I wish I would have kept it. Right mm -hmm. next to NORAD on 115, right next to the base, uh, Fort Carson. Um, but I didn't think it was worth much because it was landlocked. I was like, how do people get to it? Mm -hmm. I trespassed to get to it. I, uh, I went through the state park, took photos, got caught on the way out, and the state troopers <laughs> like, or the state park guy was like, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. Um, so I had the photos. I put it on Craigslist this time to sell it. And I should have called realtors to see what it was worth, but I didn't think it was worth anything. I was like, so I want $500 down, $400 a month, $5,000 total. So I'm like running this $5,000 game. Yeah. The next day, a guy's bringing money to my house. So I got put my money back in my pocket. The next month, I was profitable. So that's why I like I love land. Land is profitable forever and throughout the whole entire deal. Like if I sell or finance it, like I'm, I'm profitable the whole time. But, but that first rental property I bought in Okeechobee, I paid $124,000 in 2007 for it. You know what mm -hmm. I sold it for in 2019 after three evictions, never made any money? $124,000. Oh, <laughs> so. That's wild. See, that's what I like about, well, that's why I kind of dislike about houses, right? You never know. People just say, get rentals, get rentals, get rentals. Yeah. But it's a formula to it, right? So now you got this, you got motion going now, right? So you do land a little bit different. Right. I focus on builders first and then I contact sellers. Do you yeah. do it like that? No, or? it's brilliant. I mean, basically, like, and then this is no offense. You're an yeah. order taker. Like, so you figure out what the builders want and you go and fill the order. Mm -hmm. So that's brilliant. Um, I like to do a little opposite. And this has been a, like my strategy changes every like year. I'm like, I'm like, right now I'm trying to only do one land deal a month and make a hundred grand. Mm. But like, I've done a bunch of small deals like People ask me what kind of land deals I do. I was like, the profitable ones. I like mm. to make profit. But now I've changed it up a little bit in the past like eight months. I, I look for demand. I want to know where the land's selling at. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go into that. I'm going to deep dive it to a neighborhood level, micro down to the neighborhood level. And I'm going to figure out what the price per acre or price per square foot is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to backwards plan. It's like, okay, if I want to make $10,000 profit per parcel, then I'm gonna backwards or reverse engineer that and make an offer. So if the land's worth 100, I'm gonna make an offer for like, I don't know, $60,000. That, that gives me room for my realtor fees, my closing costs, mm -hmm. 10,000 in my pocket. And that's only if it sells for cash. I wanna sell it on seller financing. How are you uh, making these offers? So I, I, I do something called my land offer letter, the LOL. I What's send a that? blind offer basically. Mm, it's, okay. uh, so if you got a piece of land in Okeechobee, Florida and it's worth a hundred, I'm gonna send you an offer for 60,000. I can close pretty quickly. Um, and this is a letter in the mail. Yeah, I got and one back. offer and you like never contacted me. You just, no. And you sending that to everybody in this uh, zip code or? Everyone in that neighborhood. In the neighborhood. And then I break it down by neighborhood. That allows me to figure out my pricing very easily. I chunk it down to That's the size cool. and the neighborhood. So the biggest problem with that is trying to get enough letters out. Yeah. But uh, you, I mean, I could like, I train a virtual assistant how to do that, and they can sit there and spin those out all day long. Wow. So I know you teach people as well, right? So let's talk about one of your students' deals. Well, I want to talk about. I'm going to give Matt Burchard a shout out because I was just talking to him today. He texted me a, a a text. He just, he just did his first land deal, but he said, I'm about to do my second land deal too. Mm -hmm. We're buying a piece of land in South Carolina for $100,000 on the water in South Carolina, the ocean, Yeah, selling it for $400,000. Sheesh. So, you know, it's- How did he get that deal? He sent the mailing out? Just like I just told you. Mm -hmm. It's mind boggling. I wish it would have started like that. Yeah, so do these people <laughs> call you first or do they just send the mail back to it's you with mixture. the- Sometimes they fax it back to me. And yes, I said fax machine, $10 a <laughs> month, myfax.com. Sometimes they call, sometimes they'll email it. My, uh, my assistant sent a letter today. She said, um, this one just came back in the mail. So I sent it to Sam. He helps me with the acquisitions and the mailers. Um, but, but Sam's been traveling a lot lately. Mm -hmm. He's been in like France and Italy and all over the place. And that's why I love land flipping. <laughs> well, he's like, Brent, I can't take calls right now. I was like, well, take your phone number off. You know what that did? It made more people email them to us mm. and send them in the mail and fax them. It's like a funnel. If you if you like close all these roads off and you only want to leave one road open, they're That's gonna what take they're the gonna path. Do. 
Wow, that's actually smart. I'm actually going to probably try that on my direct Do it. Mail. Test it. Test Take it. the phone number off. Just put my email. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But you know, you know, you want to give people the ability to call you and cuss you out. Yeah. Because like <laughs> sometimes like people that are angry need to need something to vent because like sometimes we mail people that just they don't want to take our offer or they're just upset with their life and they'll they'll call you will get some frustrated people which you know yeah but uh and it's fun to have those like voicemails and keep them around and sh like share them to your friends <laughs> right right so what challenges did you have to go through you know within this business and how did you overcome it you know i guess just not knowing what i was doing you know, I, I probably did 10 or 12 land deals before I hired a coach and mm. I made a lot of mistakes. Like I bought holes in the ground. I bought treasures deeds where the people bought it on back taxes and then sold it to me. And I thought it was worth like, I made stupid <laughs> mistakes and it was just not knowing. And it was sad because I already had like nine, nine rentals. Like you think mm -hmm. that like I can go from rentals to land, but I was like almost like starstruck. I was like making money so quick. Yeah. But there's a problem with that that's dangerous. When you, when you start making money quick, you make a lot of mistakes. So I was like looking at the assessor site. I was like, oh, the assessor site says it's worth 33,000. I'll write them a check right now for 3,300. Mm -hmm. And I was finding like little mistakes. And, I, and I, I, uh, I actually wrote it down. We call it the land buying roadmap or the due diligence checklist. If anybody wants a copy of it, they can just go to the landsharks dot com forward slash dd as in due diligence it's like 14 things yeah. and all 14 of those things caught me at one time or another on my wow. first several deals that's wow so, so you know you talk about like coaching talk about the importance of mentorship yeah i mean you're an amazing coach like i talk to your students all the time and uh i will say that uh i wish i would have known like a coach in the very beginning because like I just talked about Matthew Burchard doing that hundred thousand dollar. No, shoot, he's buying it for a hundred. He can sell it for four. Cool. So like three hundred. That's like a three hundred thousand dollar spread. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have the hundred thousand. There's a lender in my group that that joint ventured with him. But I probably never would have done those two hundred eighty five dollar land deals and sold them for five thousand. I did so many of those small deals. I mean, hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. I bought a hundred and twenty something parcels and and and. Uh, uh, Arizona, I still got like 20 of those left. Now we've mm -hmm. made a fortune on them. We've 10 X our money, but if you 10 X $321, it, I'd rather two X like 50,000 or, or 300,000 or a million. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess like the, what a, the long answer to your question about coaching is we can get you there fast. Like I've been doing this for like a long time now yeah. since 2016. So you can compress, compress all those years in like three months. Mm hmm. So. So now what ultimately inspired you to become that entrepreneur? You know, I've always had that drive, you know, like my parents were such hard workers. My mom worked a full time job. My dad worked a full time job. Like my dad would leave the house at like 6 a.m. Come home usually after I went to bed yeah. or I was already in bed. And I remember my dad picking me up from daycare. And usually we'd be one of the last kids picked up. And we'd always hear his car, like the Dodge Aspen, it was like a 19 something Dodge Aspen, like you don't even see them on the road anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, we'd go down, like this thing didn't have like an exhaust and like they'd be like, Brent, Brooke. Brooke's, <laughs> Brooke's my sister's name. Yeah. Your dad's coming, like from blocks away. Mm -hmm. And I'd be a little embarrassed because the car's got all this rust <laughs> marks. And, <you> hear it. <laughs> and then we'd drop beer cans right out of the, the, the passenger floor. Like this is before we had to wear like Man. seat belts and car seats and stuff like that. But we'd drop beer cans. And it's like I saw my parents working so hard all their entire life. And like they, they have something now, I mean, they have some land in their house, but it's like I knew being a business, and part of this is from my dad too, because I always wanted to go work for someone else while I had my lawn business. Like, son, have your own business. Mm. Like, because he built a business for someone else. So it was just like that, plus I like, and I didn't understand it at the time, but you like real estate investors, we have our investments, but then if we have an investment business, like we have the ability to multiply very quickly, quickly and we take our money that we make from land profits and put it put into it buildings down. like we're looking at across the street. And even if it's a small portion, like so our babies are making babies while we sleep, our money, you yeah. know? So I every, guess it was all that, you know? Every soldier, every dollar in that account is working. So yeah. 
Uh, I also like from Instagram, right? I seen that because we used to talk about family. You close land deals with your dad. I yeah. always like from seeing that, I'm like, yo, that is dope. Yeah. So can you talk about like one deal you got with him? So, okay. So um, we just, me and my dad had, so we bought the land for 10000 This The buyer just paid it off. He paid 28000 He paid payments. Um, so we just... We just divvied out the uh, profits on that. So what is it? Twenty-eight divided by two. Or, I'm sorry, eighteen thousand divided by two. So we roughly we split like nine k each. Mm. Um, and it was we had multiple years of payments for that. Uh, but my dad's done like fifty something land deals. He's sixty-two years old. He's done manual labor his entire life. So his body's pretty beat up. He's been run over by a truck, beat by a baseball bat. My dad was kind of crazy, <laughs> but he he climbed towers for a living, like these cell phone towers. But now he works with his brain, mm. you know, and uh, does land deals. And uh, that's changed their life. It got them out of uh, bankruptcy because uh, they went through some hard times. I actually did, I think it's episode 1250 on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I interviewed my dad a couple years ago uh, when I was just starting out in podcast. And you were on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast yes, cut, twice, right? Twice, yep. So, all right. Some of the most land deals we were ever doing. So this is when I was really scaling. We had a team of about 15 people. And just full disclosure, like it's me my assistant, my part-time acquisition manager, and a part-time accountant. Like I have scaled down, like I want a lifestyle. Like I've got three kids, a wife, <clears throat> and I want to be with them more often. Um, but we're, we're entrepreneurs, we build all the time. But going back to the, we were doing roughly nine, we were selling roughly nine parcels of land a, a week at one time. And uh, we, we were talking about this a little bit about computer classes, like my dad needs to take a computer class, but we made Miss Helen take a computer class. Uh, so I got her computer classes. She's like 65 years old, 64 years old. Mm -hmm. And she was slinging land. Like she was selling land so fast. Helen Way, a little shout out to her. Um, she was selling land so fast, we would get refund requests. Like wow. that's how you know you're doing well when you start getting refunds. Mm -hmm. Because that we're closing too fast. We're closing too fast. So we get refund requests. And at the time it was pissing me off. But on the other hand, I'm like, look back. I'm like, gosh, I should have encouraged it more. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you know who she was selling land to? I mean, people she can relate to, older yeah. landowners. I mean, she would talk for hours. And the good thing about her was she would work nights and weekends yeah. when, when our buyers were off work. So she would sell land to other grandparents. But let me tell you about, you can find one of the cheapest person in, people in the world, but there's one thing they will spend their money on. What is One that? thing. You provide them something for their grandchildren or a legacy or a new baby or anything like this, and you say, listen, imagine when you're no longer here, you can leave this land. And we were selling a lot of this land on payments. Damn, all you to sold me. <laughs> so, and that was Helen, you know, she was selling to a lot of grandparents, and I gotta give her some credit. Uh, Jen Way, my acquisition manager since 2016, um, she, that's her mom. Mm. So, and she trained her mom as well. So, I, I can't could, even take much credit. I just surround myself with really smart people. I could see it because these landowners, they're usually older. Right, so Helen, she could relate to them. She could build better rapport than we can. Mm -hmm. I even tell people like I like hiring female cold callers because I feel like they're even better at building rapport. So having yeah. you know somebody that's older building rapport. Oh, I'm about to get my grandma on the game. Grandma, you about to tap in with me? Yeah, well, I need you on the phone. <laughs> so true. I can't agree more, Elijah. Like I had two acquisition managers, Jen. And Chrissy, both of them are females, and the land sales specialist, Helen. So I had a bunch of females on my team, but like, you ever get cold calls? You get, you get uh, telemarketers that call you. Mm -hmm. If it's a man, you just hang up on them. Right. A woman, it's like, hey, how's your day? Like, you wanna be nice, and give her the mm -hmm. courtesy, and shoot, I'll, I'll probably get sold by a woman way faster than a man because, like, I'm not on guard. 100%. So, where can the people follow you at? Uh, Brent L. Bowers, and yes, the L stands for land. Uh, I had my name changed. Uh, Brent L. Bowers, one on most social media channels. Yes, sir. So make sure y'all tap in. And I do free classes every Thursday at 7 p.m. If you want to join, I want you to text LAND at 813-687-8867. Game changes.